Hey, it's good to be back, and we are now ready to finish things up in New Super Mario Bros. 2 for the Nintendo 3DS. And when I mean by finishing it up, I mean the main game, because let's face it, I still have a lot to do, especially with the three side levels, I think, and the extra added DLC. Fortunately, the DLC isn't that long, though I don't know if I will be that good, but I already know someone named BD Cool 213. He did a much better job than I ever would. But you'll get to see it when it happens, because right now I have, like, a lot to say. Anyway, we've arrived at World 6, the first area, and it looks like we are raining meteorites. My god, what the heck? Yes, I had to constantly move around all over the place. Standing still will make will have you die, and that's not a very good thing. At this point, I'm already over 200 lives, though I do think that if I kept on going with this, I would have gotten at least around 999. I don't think it really matters that much, but you really do get my point. Alright, this next part here is going to be a really tricky one, especially since there's going to be more platforms. And as the further you progress, the more platforms appear, forcing you to either move or expect to get killed. Though I do believe it's going to get a little harder along the way. And I had to wipe out that thing in the process. Yeah. And I got it, but I lost my raccoon powers. That's terrific. Though I do think the le level isn't over yet. Why? You see that? You have to hit the beanstalk at the very end before the gold post. So that way you can actually get your hands in the third coin. And it's not that hard, really. Though, truth is, I would have done it the first time I did it. But whatever, it doesn't really matter to me that much. And I got myself a free life since it really did help me. That was pretty good. But we still have a long way to go, believe me. This video, like this world, is split into two parts. And this next part here is going to be the toughest one. When I was doing the original run, I was literally freaking out. Freaking out due to the fact that I, I didn't I had a hard time. I didn't really know what the heck I needed to do. But fortunately I know what I have to do this time. So let's get started. And this ghost out here has like a lot of switch pushing and platform moving. And I'm Fire Flower, so which now I can kick some ass. But I gotta be careful nonetheless because this is gonna get really crazy. Really crazy, really fast. Yeah, I had to hit the switch again so that way I can head higher. And I think this is where I get the first star coin. Though I do know that there is a secret exit here. And when I do get the secret exit, I can just fly through the rest of the level without so much as a second thought. Now you need to take the right door in order to continue. Though I know that Game Explain has already provided like a detailed analysis on where to find like every single star coin in the game, including the hidden worlds, I recommend you check it out because these guys are really cool. Anyway, this part here is where things really went to hell for me when I first did this, when I had the crappy HD camera looks, and it sucked, believe me. So I think at this point I had to like, move so that way the boo can be able to get out of the way. Now once I hit the switch, it reveals a ladder so that way you can be able to reach upwards. Yes, I know for certain. If you're watching this right now, this is Christmas Eve, so I gotta get this done, and I gotta get it done fast. Though I think by this point I would have Sonic Generations finished too. And this next part here, well, you can get the second star coin. Like so. Though I do think I should have went for the one up top. But I think I went to the door anyway and just, you know what, screw it. Yeah, I did this in a matter so that way I can get all three star coins. And I timed my triple jump, right? And now I had to take the door again, but instead of going to the left, I think I went for the right. Yeah, I went to the left as usual, but instead I decided to just take the door and then head to the right. Yeah, because once you get to the right, there's like no switch and stuff like that. And there's a big boo, I gotta watch out for that. Okay, hit the switch again, again, and more platforms show up. Okay, so far so good. Uh-oh, another big boo. That means I really gotta move. Good thing the boo allows me to move out of the way so I can get the dub. And I hit the switch, and I find a hidden door. Very creative, Nintendo. Creative when you pull stuff like this off. And I think this here is where you can find the third and final star coin. Well, the whole point of this is that you need to keep going all the way up. And I think this is where you also find the hidden exit. So, why frankly, you make this look too easy. Though I had a really hard time after getting the secret exit just to, like, find the regular exit. And the secret exit here is that you need to, like, watch out for the boo, time your jumps, and you make it. No biggie. Nice. Now, with that out of the way, I can now continue. And fortunately, I get access to another level. Nice, but we're not done yet. We still have work to do. Believe me, we all do. And time we head back to the ghost house yet again. Fortunately, since I have all three star coins, I'm just basically going to keep on going and just, well, collect as many coins as I can and progress through the level. Since by that time, I don't have to worry about finding all the coins and stuff like that. I can imagine New Super Mario Bros. U with their ghost houses and how challenging they'll get. 
I think I may need a guide for it because let's face it, trying to get like 100% in everything is a real challenge. Not to mention the overworld layout of the game is similar to that of Super Mario World. Now, I really like it, but I do think that there's like a lot of different paths you can take. It's similar to that with the hidden Star Worlds where you could basically shortcut your way through the game. Any speedrunner would know that you could actually just go through the game and beat it in a matter of minutes. More like in like a minimal run. Yeah, a minimal run is what it means. But for a 100% run, you need to like clear all 96 areas. That includes all hidden passageways. And I thought to myself, if this is the right way, then I should be able to reach the exit. Let's find out. I don't think so. I think you have to do, you have to go all the way up top. And there it is. There's the other switch I need to take. There you go. That's where it leads me to the exit. Fortunately, since I thought it would take me a really long time when I first did it. It was so horrendously bad I'm not kidding. Fortunately, we were able to make it and I think we found the regular exit So quite frankly our work's done in this level and it was the fastest time ever nice But at least with that out of the way, I don't have to worry about going back in there. Thank God Now we can continue on the main passage as usual time we tackle area 2 and I know Area 2 is going to be proven to be a real challenge. Why do I say that? Well, I don't know, maybe. Okay, so let's continue on. I thought there would be something up there, but there wasn't. So now I gotta head all the way down. And it looks like we're gonna be going for a little ride. Yes, this part here is really tricky. Really tricky due to the fact that you're gonna be on top of some sort of platform. Yeah, a platform that is constantly moving and you have to keep on moving so that way you can be able to reach certain areas. Though, normally I could just waste my time going through all this, but I needed to get that extra life because it was necessary. And I thought if I dropped down, there would be no need for that, but I didn't think I would. Anyway, I gotta watch out for those Goomba Towers, so that way they can fall to their death in the lava, and I could be able to reach the first Star Coin. But I gotta wait for the platform to show up. Though I was like, what's the point of me waiting? And I could just basically keep on going for the rest of the level, and make it to the other side, too. And there are those mini Goombas, and I got the first one... And I lost a life. That is just absolutely stupid. I can't believe I did that. I really can't believe I did that. That was just really, really dumb. Really dumb by the fact that when you lose your raccoon leaf, you also lose your mobility. And that to me really sucks. It really does. Anyway, let's try this again. Hoping this time I know exactly what I'm doing. But fortunately, it's not that hard. Since I didn't hit a checkpoint, I don't suffer any time loss or anything. And at least I get another raccoon leaf, which in my humble opinion, it helps. This time I actually know exactly what I'm doing. And I got the extra life to make up for the life I lost. Which makes it all null and void. And like before, I keep on moving, but I gotta watch out because it's gonna get very problematic. And I keep on smacking that thing and I only got myself one coin for it. Because I was just really focused, really trying to take my time with this, and I had to like wait till like the Goombas move so that way I can cross through it safely. Oh, it's a para Goomba. I thought as much. Anyway, I continue on. At least I'm doing fine, but I don't know yet. Oh yeah, I think I know what this is needed for. Just to get up there in that red pipe. Well, there's a good thing that's always a use for that. Okay, so now we have a yellow switch, and then we could just bang it. And more coins start dropping down. And when I hit the other switches, that means you take down piranha plants, and you net yourself more coins this way. Which is kind of nice. Though I think we come across now the second part of this level. And this one is absolutely horrendous. Not really horrendous, but it's more or less more time consuming because the second and third star coins can be really hard to find if you're not prepared. And there's also those rising and falling coin arcs, which as you progress through this on your transport, you'll be able to get coins this way. And like so. <laughs> Yeah, as I watch this and I'm providing my post commentary, I'm just thinking about it. And I just thought, what if I did a little better than I should have? But whatever, I don't think it really matters that much. And I take down the dry bones, though it's only a temporary reprieve. But I gotta watch out though, because those fireballs are gonna end up hurting us. And I gotta wait till I'm at the highest point, so that way I can whack the blocks and acquire the second star coin. The third star coin is a little tricky. It's a little tricky due to the fact where you have to actually... How do I put this in the right words? You need to use the bob bombs to blast the wall on the left side. Don't worry, I cover it after I complete the level. So don't, so if you're thinking that I'm like not doing a 100% run, well, quite frankly, you're mistaken. 
and I decided instead to just take a shortcut so that way it could save me some extra time. And there's a third star coin. However, due to the fact that I really wasn't paying attention on what I was doing, I couldn't get it. Or due to the fact that I didn't time my move well enough. And that to me sucks. So I was like, eh, screw it. I can worry about it later. But I gotta watch out though, because those things can be really problematic. And I was like, I gotta get up there and get out of there, because I really don't want to stay there any longer. Anyway, I will take myself a little breather, and you guys can check out me getting the third star coin. Alright? Enjoy! Because I still got more to finish. I had to do that, you know, I really had to do that. I, at least with that done, now I can move on to Area 3. Though I will worry about the extra area later, so I thought, why not, get spend like 5 coins and unlock another passage. I'm gonna need it though. Anyway, I take, that's 6-B, but I can worry about for that at the end at Part 2. Anyway, we arrive at World 6-3. And it looks like now we're going to be going through yet another passageway. This is going to be terrific. I don't know why I say this, but come on, I'm only trying. Anyway, we've arrived at some crystal caves, and look really cool. Though, the gimmick here is the moving platforms. Yeah, I could get a fire flower, but I'm not going to need it, because I need a lot of mobility. That's what the raccoon leaf is for. And I gotta get that extra life, and shoot. Wait, did I? Damn it! I can't believe I didn't get it. I can't believe I forgot it. Anyway, I keep on going, trying to keep myself good speed, avoiding fire flowers along the way. Yeah, I had to worry about that. Anyway, the first star coin is actually rather easy to get. You just need to make sure to make room. Then once the platform expands, hold down, and then you can get your hands on the first star coin. Just like that. Now there are two more, so you may as well pay attention to know what you're doing. I know for certain that this cave is a really challenging one, and then for the challenge here, you need to use the platforms to just get all the coins as they fall. If you can get all eight, you'll net yourself a free life. Or if you're not Super Mario, you'll get yourself a much needed power up. Though in most cases, you'll get either a fire flower or a, or a raccoon leaf. Anyway, I just wait till the platforms expand, and then head up top. Though it did save me like a few extra seconds, I needed the extra running. Though I do have a feeling I forgot something, and I lost my raccoon power. That's just stupid. Anyway, I hit this platform up top, and there aren't any power-ups. So I take the yellow pipe, and it leads me down to a, a hidden one. And this one most interesting, because instead of them throwing fireballs, they throw coins at you. And you can basically use it to your advantage and collect some extra pocket change. Though it does help you get more extra lives, so I'm not complaining. And there's another yellow ring, and I hit it, and now they're shooting out coins. Which is kind of nice considering I'm almost at the end, but since I decided to take the high road, I get the third star coin in the process, which is very important if you're paying attention to my playthrough. And we made it at the end, and I think our work here is pretty much done. Well, not really the level, but not everything else. And this is where, the, like, the... Oh yeah, I forgot. You have to take hit these invisible blocks, so that way you can reach a high enough distance. And I get an extra life. That's pretty nice, but... Whatever. I don't think it really matters that much. Okay, so with three levels down, I think our next job is a fort. Yeah, thing is, we saw Peach head all the way to Bowser's Castle. But this game is not over yet. It isn't. So now it's time we tackle the fort. And important information you need to know is that after you beat the game, all those toad houses are infinite. Which means you can basically get like the same items over and over again if you need to. And this fort right here is a pain in the ass. Because there are flames shooting out all over the place. They shoot out in one direction, but the main strategy here is that you have to watch out or you get, like, burned. Though Dormammu would burst say it first when he does his chaotic flame hyper. Yeah, I know. But anyway, I'm progressing through this. The whole strategy here is that you need to hit those blocks so that way the flames can stop spurting out fire. And at this point, I get the first star coin. 
yeah, I'm doing post commentary while having chats, so I always gotta tell people I need to be at BRB mode so that way I can concentrate. Now, this second part here is that you have to use the platforms to hitch higher. Though, basically, you can just take the passage to the left. Okay, I took the checkpoint, but you get my point. Stomp down on it, and then take the left door. Though, I do believe this leads to star coin number two. Though, I do know that I forgot the third star coin. I cover it in an extra video to let you know. Or, basically, I cover it later on after I beat this. The whole trick here is that you need to only move when the flame stops spurting out. When they stop, basically. And once you keep on moving, you only have about a few seconds before they kick in again, and then you're screwed. Though this is kind of fun, kind of really unique. And I already made it up top and get the second star coin. Though I should have gotten coin number three. I really didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I was really focused on trying to complete the level. But at the time, I really didn't know where it was. So I was pretty much completely clueless. Anyway, I keep on going. Making it all the way up higher, that's for sure. Though I already do know where it's at. And you'll see it in this video and in the follow-up. Don't worry, I want to get it all done so that way I can move on from it and then take care of World 2. And I think this is it. That one flame that's shooting out really large, that's where the third coin is. Though I really wasn't paying attention. I, I either really wasn't paying attention or that I completely forgot it. But anyway, if you already got it, then you don't have to worry. You just keep heading all the way up to the door up above. Though I do know that this is the last, I think, the last tower of the main worlds. Though I don't know if there's going to be like sub in the extra worlds. But, I don't know, maybe. Let's find out what's behind this final door. It's a Resna roller coaster! Though, like if you've been going through everything, this entire fight is a complete joke. If you have fire flowers, you can just fire at least tw like 6 to 12 shots taking them down. Though I think at this point, this game is already over. And just like that, enjoy the extra. Well, that takes care of it. Important strategy on that area is that you need to move when they are not firing their flames. Very important to let you know, okay? Alright, with that out of the way, we now move on to Area 4. And this is where things get a bit spooky and a bit creepy. Yeah, now the first star coin is pretty easy to find. You just need to go all the way to the left. Since when I did it the first time, I really had no idea. I confess, I really didn't know what I was doing when I first did this. Firstly, it's due to the fact that since I was seeing users with the 3DS capture card that they can now record footage on their 3DS, and I was like, I was really envious. And when I finally got my hands on one, I was just all happy and stuff like that that I finally got it. And the best thing about it is since I'm getting a lot of 3DS games, this opened up new possibilities. And it's going to help me out a lot when I do playthroughs in 2013. Though here's the thing though, I'm not going to be doing playthroughs on every new game. Only some games that I'm interested in will be doing playthroughs. The rest will be all games that many have done before, but I'm taking liberties in my own style to have them be different, to have them make you feel like you're actually enjoying something. I wanted it to be something good. I wanted it to be something enjoyable for you. Besides, I keep doing, I always do what I do best. I want to provide good content for you guys. I really do. Anyway, I make it all the way up top, and good thing, because I dodged the boo. And the second coin here is actually easy. If you're Raccoon Mario, then timing is very strict, but it's pretty easy. Yeah, because I didn't have no idea where it was, so I just decided, eh, meh. Anyway, I can find the last one pretty easily. And I missed the extra life. Not that it matters, since you have like over 250 lives, which, which to me is just really funny. Anyway, I keep on going, and I have to make sure to get all eight star coins before the time runs out. Because if not, I lose my chance for a free extra life. And I keep saying this already, I think Nintendo was way too generous with all these extra lives. For what it's worth, at least that's good enough, though. I do feel they should at least add like a hard mode to this game. Though if they did that, it would really turn off some gamers. Anyway, with three star coins in hand, I now proceed to end the level. Though I gotta watch out for these flying crows and these boos. Especially when they move in a circulated formation, like a ring. 
And with that, I do believe my work here is done. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoy this. And if you really like it, leave a like. It does mean a lot to me. And I'll see you all for part two where I finish this. This is Mega Man G signing off. Take care. Peace.